Continuing that thought, Dr. Miller, the Hebrews 11 faith hall of fame that gets brought up with Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness and these various things we have, but he believed God to bring him a child, his firstborn son. His wife was 99. She laughs and Isaac's born the whole night. Um, that list, the very opening of it, from what I read in English, and I've always memorized this from the King James Version, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Meaning, in simple dum dum terms, you have, if anything, faith is believing against the evidence. In fact, it's like Thank if you. things are not evident, I'm going to purposely believe in the opposite or the thing that isn't the case. And in, in light of someone being 100 years old trying to have a freaking kid, let's be honest, the evidence is against you, overwhelmingly against you. And you're going to believe you're going to have a kid? A little bit loony, but nonetheless, that's the example set right. to believe contrary to evidence. But you want to parse it out a little more. So please do that for us. Yeah. So we, we go back to the Greek word pistis. I, I think anyone that studied, any of your viewers, that have, they, they're familiar with this if they've studied Greek. And so that particular word, it gets translated into English as belief, um, faith, this kind of thing. And the problem with that is in modern, like, say, enlightenment, post-enlightenment time, with the rise of science and this sort of thing, it gets used in philosophy in a, in a different way, a different way, in a, in a, like, I believe that gravity is affecting my, you know, ability to walk down the street. No, I don't. <laughs> you know. I know that. That's a scientific truism. Uh, now, it's up for debate just how accurate that might be or what we might mean by gravity, those are discussions that are going on, but this isn't somewhere where I'm indulging my mind in some sort of, you know, uh, otherwise non-evidenced, you know, this is a perfectly evidence-driven conclusion. Uh, it's not me indulging in some sort of make-believe or something like that. So a better example, <laughs> let me give a bad example, but this yeah. is a bad example in a good way that I think is very common to humans. Humans cheat on each other. This stuff happens in relationships, right? Yeah, yeah. Now imagine you came home, <laughs> I don't know why I came up with this example. Okay. Dirty mind. Anyway, okay. I'm, I'm doing it on purpose for, for the world to kind of laugh with me a little. You yeah. walk in, your wife's not dressed. There's underwear all around and there's men underwear around. Men's shoes that aren't yours, et cetera. And you come in and you go, um, and she's breathing heavy. Cheeks are red, <laughs> windows open. Like, and you're like, what are you doing? She's, oh, nothing, nothing. Something's not right. Uh -huh. And yet there's this cognitive dissonance that might come in where you're like, but I love her and I don't want to have my entire life ruined. And she probably just made a really bad decision. <laughs> this guy's probably running naked down the street with no clothes, no shoes. Yeah. And my wife just cheated on me. And she's like, no, no, no. You need to believe me. Yeah. Okay. There you can use that example in, in it could mean I, I have good evidence not to, but I'm going to believe you anyway. That's a better example rather than, you know, I believe that gravity is going to continue and I'm not just going to fall upward out of the planet's atmosphere. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it, maybe another idea would be... Um, sorry, I took you there. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite an image. Yeah. Uh, I hope I don't come home to that. But uh, yeah, I love my wife. But uh, anyway, uh, so I think that... Maybe belief in is a, you know, that little, that might be a better, almost a better kind of lexical range in terms of what we're talking about. You know, you believe in, say, mir uh, miracles or you believe in ghosts or you believe in leprechauns. I mean, these are outlandish things that people, everybody's going to laugh at that, but you could also believe in things that are taken a little bit more seriously. And so, you know, you could believe in the Holy Spirit. You can believe in, you know, any number of things. And so, uh, belief in, I would say it kind of captures it more closely to, to what I would think of a pistis. Now, it also includes the idea of fidelity, and that is in my allegiance to. So if someone would have pistis toward the emperor, mm -hmm. this kind of thing, you know, pistis toward your commander, um, and this kind of thing. And, and I think that that also is part of the lexical range of what's going on in the New Testament. But belief in, I think, captures the spirit of where we want to go with the discussion here in terms of did they believe in this and that? Uh, yeah, they willfully indulged in the cultic world proffered by that society in order to enter the through a conversion right. That was the conversion right. That's how you get into the community. That kind of violation of your own psychology, that step, 
Now, they didn't see it that way. They saw it as I am assenting to this. I'm entering this. I want, I'm going to start asserting this is true, confessing. And, uh, and, and the idea of like having to marshal evidence for that was unnecessary, really. Right. And so um, you just wanted to show your philosophy was better or something kind of like what Justin's doing. He's confessing. It's in his confession or his apology. Right. It, not to say that, hey, this one's literal and yours aren't as you've shown. It's more like, no, our philosophy is better, more accurate. We've got a better guy, you know, that kind of stuff rather than. Right. Yeah. He's more ancient. He's got a, you know, more prophecy about him, which, you know, we can get into the. The silliness of some of that, but it was taken seriously in terms of his credibility and, and people like that, but it did not rise to the level of historiological argumentation or the kind of justifications that it feels like people in the modern time here are falsely looking for and trying to assign to this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I hope you liked my dad Richard Miller in this interview. Remember to like and subscribe and never forget, we are Miss Vision.